Hello, welcome back to another video. It's been a while since I've made any YouTube videos, so I thought it'd be time to get back to basics and talk about my bikepacking bags. So this setup can almost be fitted to any bike. Um, you don't need any special fittings. When I went on my first solo cycle touring trip, probably over five years ago, I had two rear panniers, two front panniers, a handlebar bag, and then a tent on the back, uh, on the rack. And I ended up taking half my kitchen with me, half my wardrobe, and then I had to send back clothes and unnecessary items that I took with me at several times throughout the trip. And so I definitely overpacked for that trip. And then since then, I've been trying to reduce my weight and the size of my bikepacking luggage. Um, so I can just fit it into these um, couple of bags. And now this is what I sort of prefer to use, just because it's quite simple, it's a bit more aero, and because they're slightly smaller, it makes you work harder to reduce your weight and reduce your, the size of the, your, your luggage, uh, which I find is quite a nice challenge to have. And this kind of setup that I use also includes uh, me taking some film equipment along, whether that's sort of my GoPro, and then spare batteries for that, and also maybe a drone as well. So you can fit, you know, a decent amount in these. So the three main places to put luggage on the bike, and then a couple of accessories as well. Uh, the first place is on the saddle. We have the saddle bag, and then secondly, there's the sort of frame bag, and then finally, there's a handlebar bag. Uh, we're going to start with the handlebar bag first, and because it's located between your two drops. Um, it's not that easy to access during the day quickly because you have to sort of unclip it and everything. So this is the kind of place where you want to put things that you don't need to get during a ride. So in here today I've got my tent, I've got my sleeping bag and my roll mat. So those are all things that I don't need to access that quickly and I only need to access them when I've stopped for the day and then I can unclip it and fully unload it. This one's a Topic uh, front loader 8 litre bag which I've had for a couple of years now and the waterproofing has had a few um, sort of spikes and cuts in it so the waterproofing isn't as good as it was and so everything that's normally in there is generally wrapped up in a um, waterproof bag as well just to keep the water out and you can get bigger versions as well if you're mountain biking or have flared handlebars which then allows for more space as well and still being able to change gear and reach your brakes and then the second bag is the frame bag which as the name suggests is in the frame uh, this one is, I'm not sure what this one is, I think I got it off Amazon, um, but I'll drop all the links to all these bags in the uh, description below if you want to check them out. And this one's quite a small one, mainly because I ride quite a small frame, so I struggled to fit a frame bag and two water bottles. This one just about fits, but you, it's, not, it's not perfect. Um, but normally in there I put my drone, if I'm taking that, just because it's nice and safe in there and it feels like... If it did come off when it happened, that's probably the best place for it to be. Um, and it's fairly accessible as well, so I can get it out during the rides. But otherwise, that's a great place to put your tools or snacks. Or some people have a water bladder, um, which fills the, f the full frame. And that means you can have quite a lot of water. And because it's heavy, it keeps the centre of gravity quite low down on the bike, so it's nice and stable. Um, but that's something I haven't tried yet. But yeah, it's quite a useful space to have. But like I said, if you're small like me, then you do have to do research and either get a custom frame bag or do your research trying to find one that fits your frame um, with your water bottles or anything else. And then moving on to the saddle bag, this one is an Apidura Expedition 14 litre, I think, which I got only a couple of months ago. And so far it's doing a really good job and it's nice and waterproof. It's pretty stable as well. Sometimes you get them quite um, saggy and they move around quite a lot. Whereas this one, if you pack it correctly, um, it's quite stable, which is great. And with these, you generally have to pack the heavier things down right at the bottom of the bag and then any lighter stuff further up um, just so it keeps the, the weight down and it's less likely to move around when you're cycling, especially when you're out of the saddle. But this is a great place to put the more bulky items. Um, sometimes I put my stove, my gas um, and food, uh, sometimes clothes as well. So it's a place where it's for bulky items, but also items that you might need to get during the day. Um, such as like waterproofs or food and as I said this is a 14 litre but you can get them up to sort of 17 or 20 litres which is obviously quite a bit bigger um, but you can get them you know much smaller as well so it really depends on 
how far you're going and sort of how long you're out for, whether it's just overnight it or whether you're going off for a couple of months or something. So yeah, there's quite a range of different saddlebags and varying in price and um, size as well. So yeah, plenty to choose from. And finally, there's these kind of accessory bags um, and these come in quite a few ranges. The two ones I mainly have is this top tube bag and this stem bag, but you can also get um, bags that go on your, on your forks, whether that's for a water bottle or for luggage um, and a few different other options. Uh, this top tube bag I normally keep for snacks. Uh, it's just a great place to easily grab out food um, and it's really accessible, especially when you're cycling along, you can just grab them out. So I normally put my snacks in here and I normally keep my battery pack and um, charging cables in here just so if I do need to charge my Garmin on my phone then I can do that quite easily on the go. And yeah, other stuff that um, I put in there, just things that are quite small and that I might need to get out quite quickly, whether that's your sort of passport or your money um, or in today's world having a face mask in there. So it's very, yeah, I really like this bag. Um, and even though it's quite small, you can still fit quite a lot in there, especially if, you, you know, quite a few bars and, uh, yeah, anything else like sun cream. So, yeah, that's probably one of my favourite locations for those sort of little snacks and goodies. And then finally, I've got this Alpkit stem bag, um, which I've only got fairly recently. But I found as I was doing more filming on my trips, that I really need a place to put my GoPro which I could just easily get, grab out when I needed it. So I decided to go for this and I can just, yeah, take it out quite easily. And it's a good place that I can store my GoPro, um, which is really accessible and quite neat. Um, but again, you could put snacks or nuts and raisins and anything else in there, which is, yeah, it's quite a decent size. Um, I think it's 1.4 litres, I'm not sure. I'll have to check. Um, but yeah, so again, that's good. This isn't waterproof. I think they've come up with the newer version which has better water protection. Um, but for me, it's, it works fine. Um, and so, yeah, that's quite a handy thing to have. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I mean, it'd be interesting to know how your setup differs from mine, because everyone has their own setup. And also this was just a quick bikepacking bag setup video uh, without really going into the full details of the luggage and equipment that I take with me. So if you think that'd be interesting, then let me know in the comments below and I'll hope to do one of those soon, detailing all the different kit and sleeping bags and tent that I take with me. Yeah, so thanks for watching and happy adventuring.